Hello there guys, it is Niran here and welcome to episode 8 of our Aston Villa career mode series. Today we're going to have two games, uh, the first of which is in the Capital One Cup against Stoke City and the second of which is an away game in the Barclays Premier League against West Ham United. Now, as you can see, first of all, I'm just changing my scouts around and sending them to different places. They've recently come back to me saying that they found all that they can in various countries. So I've sent the guy that was in Switzerland um, to uh, Russia, maybe. Hang on. Where did I send them? Oh, yeah, Russia. I don't know. And someone else to Portugal, something like that. But now you can see here, just sorting out the team for the Stoke game. Now, obviously, it is a cup game, so I am going to be changing things around quite considerably. First of which, Loughton uh, will be out, or Loughton, sorry, Loughton will be out. Uh, Nathan Baker comes in for him. I think Gary Gardner will also start this game. You'll see the squad here. Uh, Gardner, Van Yinkel, and Delta sent to Byman Bakuna getting his first start of the season there, and Agbongahor uh, getting his as well, I think, in the cup at least. And Shea Given also comes in for Brad Guzan. So this is going to be quite a junior, well, not a junior team, but a team that hasn't played a huge amount of football this season. Kieran Clark also coming in as well. Uh, no Backley or Broomer in the starting lineup. And our first chance of the game in the 19th minute did go to Stoke there. Glenn Whelan doing well to get away from the challenge of your Ezekore and the such like. And his shot hit the side netting. Now in the 24th minute, Andy Vyman there sets away, cuts inside. And what a goal. What a goal with the OP finesse. That's his weaker foot as well. Great goal. 25th minute apparently. I said 24th. But anyway, that, that doesn't matter. But it was the 25th minute. And what a goal that was there. Just cutting inside, probably too easily from a Stoke point of view, but a great finish nonetheless past Oyoa, who I think is now uh, the Stoke City goalkeeper. Now, moving on, the next chance of the game, Asaidi played down the left-hand side, no full-back in sight. Great first time, but, well, not quite first time, but volleys ball in, but Cameron Jerome can't really do anything with the first time shot. Van Yinkel then played through and with his long-range ability there, forcing the save from the Stoke City keeper under pressure. Uh, Cameron Jerome there set forward again, and Jura Zakori and Shea Given combining to com uh, to combat that threat there of a Stoke attack. But Delft there playing through Agbola in the 82nd minute, late on in the game now, and he made it 2-0. A great finish there from Agbola on his left foot, on the full-time volley there. Uh, just celebrating it with him, actually. It's interesting to, to, uh, to find this, but Leandro Bakuna, I was actually thinking of selling him in the next transfer window, but he played really well. I think he was actually one of the best players on our team, really did very well, and I would think he'll be getting some more playing time. There, Jack Grealish playing in Delft. Grealish, who came off the bench there, combining with Klein, and then giving the ball to Delft. He forced the save from the Stoke City keeper, and that was the last action of the game. The game did end 2-0, and that now sees us into the quarter-finals of the Capital One Cup. A great cup run we're on. I think we've already surpassed the league of uh, the cup objective, sorry. But man of the match there, going to Gary Gardner, getting a great uh, rating there as well. Fabian Delft doing well, Nathaniel Klein, and all the substitutees as well. Shea given there as well. But Van Yinkel, Vyman and Bakuna doing well. As well as Agbola Hall. But unfortunately now a training injury strikes. We've been very lucky with uh, with injuries in general. But six weeks uh, with a torn groin. Andreas Vyman will be out for. That leaves a little less competition for uh, some of the other guys in the squad. Uh, but Andreas Vyman unlucky to be out. That was what I was alluding to earlier there. One of my scouts being sent out to Russia. But here was the first scout report. From Portugal there, Rafa, a young striker from Rio Ave, 17 years old, uh, a pretty decent player, I'll scout him further there, and Christian Atsu as well, a left winger from Porto, that hasn't updated, I'm quite sure he signed for Chelsea recently, didn't he? And then he's been loaned out to Vitesse Arnhem, but anyway, there's Steven Defoe as well coming up on the scout report, and here, a scout report from France as well, Chungun Jong there from FC Nantes, the South Korean young striker, Neil Moore Pay there from OGC Nice. We all know he's incredible. Balance, acceleration, agility, sprint speed. Just everything about this kid is awesome. And Jamil Saili as well there. The Tunisian Montpellier sentiment. But just looking at the scout report just quickly here for the stats uh, of game. Loton up one. Akore up two. Vla and uh, Guzan no change. Klein up one, which is interesting to see. Van Yinkel up none. A bit disappointing maybe. But Delph up one. Bruma up one now as well. Backley up two to 75. Benteke still 81 stat, but he's up two. Uh, all Brighton up to as well, and Clark, Hellenius now up to, as well as Luna, and Gary Garner, who of course has had a lot of playing time recently, Gabriel Agbonga Horst in a 73 starter, and just moving through the reserve guys there, Bennett and Grealish both up to, Tonev up one now to 68, despite having not played that much, Graham up to, uh, Segrist up one, and some of the other younger players going up as well, Bakuna up one as well, and Vyman 
Uh, then Jordan Graham, I did actually give a, a slight debut to in the C Capital One Cup game even. Uh, he came on as a late substitute. So yeah, that could be why he's gone up a stat. There are some of the low knees as well. As Samia Caruthers, I did just cut that off a little bit too early. But Samia Caruthers going up a few as well. He's now a 67 starter. But now preparing for the West Ham game, the Barclays Premier League game. Obviously, we'll be going back to a uh, a, four, a a starting lineup even that we had uh, similar from the, the whole game. And uh, I forgot to put the starting... Oh, well, anyway. Yeah, I can confirm it was pretty much the same as the whole City lineup. Bakali and Bruma back in the squad. Uh, none of, really not many of the players who played well in that Capital One Cup game getting a, a run out. I probably should have changed that uh, based on how they played. But the first chance of the game there in the 25th minute, Benteke cut inside past Winston Reid and forcing the save from the West Ham keeper. Now, I was going into this game expecting to try and at least get a point away from home. It would be difficult, but uh, we'd be hoping to get a point. And that, that ambition started off well. Bruma there. With a goal in the 35th minute. What a goal. What a celebration there from the, the new signing. Well, I suppose he's not really a new signing anymore. But the signing from you, from Sporting Lisbon even, there with a good goal. Cutting inside past James Collins. But then someone flicked a switch. In fact, someone flicked two switches. Someone flicked a switch for us to make our team completely incompetent. There is when you can watch the ball go by with that great acrobatic strike. And then Andy Carroll going close. But someone sw flicked a switch even. For West Ham, because moments later, just at the end of the half, Joe Cole taking advantage of some slack defending. I don't know what the heck went on there. My centre backs were just gone. I don't know where Vlar was. I don't know where Akore was. Their position was shocking there, but that gave them the equaliser. I was extremely disappointed, really, with how simple it was. Uh, West Ham were really providing a bit of a threat, actually, mainly because Andy Carroll was playing like an 85 rated player, uh, as well as Matt, Jar Matt Jarvis. Uh, that, that combination was just tearing me apart. Moments later, Cole threw and right. I'm sorry. A, how is this an own goal? Because it's given it to Matthew Lowton as an OG. But the challenge there from Akore, surely that stops Cole. How? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, that was one of the most BS-filled goal goals I've ever seen. But Benteke there, shooting just wide with a finesse shot. Noble then with a cross into the box. Cole there with a good header. And Guzan. Guzan. If I was if I was part if I was a virtual part of this game, I would have walked up to Guzan and duly slapped him at this point. How you can just tip the ball from such a tame header, from such a tame header from Joe Cole, how you can decide to tip it there, Nathaniel Klein with an air shot. So it's just, I mean the brains of my team are just completely gone at this point. Van Yinkel there with a strike. It's too late at this point. It's 3-1. But Benteke bursting through with a great strike and he made it 3-2 in the 89th minute. Would a late comeback beyond it would have to be one heck of an effort. But uh, really, really, some of the defending... I can't get over the defending in this game. It was, a lot of it wasn't even my fault. A lot of it was just the the positioning of the of my AI defenders, if you like. Not, I suppose they're not really technically AI. But, you know, before I take control of them, their positioning was terrible. And, of course, it was then duly made 4-2. Because West Ham just went up, literally just went up the other end of the pitch and just slotted it between my defenders who had no idea what they were doing, and Dennis there, clearly a new signing for West Ham, making it 4-2, a good finish actually past Brad Guzan, uh, but really, in all honesty, that was shocking defending for me, I shouldn't have made that slide tackle, but uh, Guzan might as well have not been there, because he didn't make a save, he didn't make a single save in the entire game, so you can pretty much, you can draw a conclusion there about Guzan's performance, only getting a 5.3 in the end, absolutely diabolical, I don't know whether to look for a new goalkeeper, because... Guzan seems quite incompetent, although maybe maybe I should give Shea Given a chance in the next game, because he played well in the Capital One Cup game. But good ratings there for Delft and Benteke and Brumer, I suppose, in that game, but not an overly great performance defensively. Uh, just to end the episode, I'm going to look at the top scorers now of the Premier League. Bale there top, ahead of Benteke and Kagawa. They're all on seven, closely followed by Aguero, Coutinho, Young, Suarez, Osvaldo, Bent, Crouch, Gutierrez and Corren. And then the assists, Suarez, Danny. Uh, of Liverpool, he's a new signing, clearly then, Cissé, Chadley, Ben Arthur, Jarvis, Moses, Jovetic, Hazard, Del Balassi, and uh, Keane, I don't know what, which Keane that is, uh, but yeah, just I just wanted to just quickly uh, show you that, um, and see who the best performance, performers of the league even were, Gareth Bale there somehow has not been transferred to Real Madrid, I don't know why, but he is a top scorer, along with my Christian Benteke, and Kagawa, but there, a quick look at the table, Manchester United still top, we are still just about second, despite that loss. Spurs there third. Newcastle running out of the Champions League places. With Liverpool fifth. Man City sixth. Chelsea seventh. Arsenal down there in ninth. Not having a great start to the season. Uh, but down towards the bottom. Cardiff 
uh, out of the relegation zone now. They're in 16th, Sunderland 17th, and in the relegation zone, Stoke, Crystal Palace, and Hull. But I'm hoping you've enjoyed this episode. Like and subscribe if you did comment about enjoying it. If you enjoyed it that much, I hope you have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. I tell you what, before now, if I told you that Etihad were the sponsor of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, I don't think you'd believe me. Nonetheless, in other news, we're ready to get underway.